Good morning and welcome to our worship here on YouTube once again. Today we reach the fourth Sunday uh, in Lent and we'll be continuing to follow the theme uh, of our Lent course which we're doing on a, on a Wednesday night. So tonight we'll be thinking about how we share our story. What is my story? But of course, the fourth Sunday in Lent is also traditionally Mothering Sunday. And so that's reflected in our first hymn. We gladly celebrate and praise. prayers of adoration and confession today, I'm reading two prayers written by Nick Fawcett. So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, with awe and wonder, we come to worship you. You are higher than our highest thoughts, but always close by our side. Greater than we can ever think or imagine, but yet known to us in Christ. More powerful than anything or anyone, but nurturing as a mother tends her child. Constantly at work in the lives of nations, yet having a special concern for every one of us. And though we stretch our imagination to the limit, Lord, we barely begin to glimpse how wonderful you are. Though we know you a lifetime, we scarcely start to fathom the depths of your love. Though we have been blessed beyond measure, still you hold the best in store. And though we wander far from you, always you seek us out. Though you sometimes seem distant, always you are near. Though life seems to make no sense, still you are present and your purpose unchanged. Almighty and everlasting God, give us humility to acknowledge our weakness beside your greatness, faith to trust in you despite our doubts and our blindness to your glory joy in knowing you, despite the limitations of our understanding, and peace in serving you, knowing that you are the Lord of all, a God both near and far. 
we marvel at your love. Receive our praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer of confession. Lord, we come in all our weakness and with all our failings, rejoicing that in Christ we have been cleansed and made new, that through him you have set your mark upon us and called us to be your people. Forgive us when we fail you, our lives betraying our calling and your love. Forgive us when people look at us and instead of seeing something of you, see only ourselves. Forgive us when the things we say and do obscure and deny the gospel rather than proclaiming its message to all. Help us to be a truly holy people, reflecting your love, showing your compassion and responding to your guidance. Renew and restore us through the love of Christ and the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Touch our heart as we worship together today and strengthen our faith so that in the week ahead, we may live and work for you to the glory of your holy name. So receive what we are and direct what we shall be. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. the greatest story ever told. Of all the stories told in our time, this might be the greatest of all. Would you like that book signed? Yes, please. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Here you go. Are you going to buy that? Um, no, <clears throat> I, I, no, I'm not. Thank you. Here you go, sir. Enjoy that. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Can I have it signed, of please? Of course, of course you may. To Vicky. To Vicky. Yes. Can you take a picture of us, please? Of course. Of course. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> beginning.
Morning. Finally finished, eh? Right. Sorry. Have a good day. Uh, and you. Morning. Morning. I've got something for you. A gift. Please, uh, sit, sit with me. Our reading today is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 13 to 15. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading today tells us that we must always be prepared to give the reason for the hope that we have. And are we prepared? I know it was always the Boy Scout motto, wasn't it? Be prepared. Not that I have a lot of experience of that. I was a cub at one time, but I left in shame. Not because I wasn't prepared, but because I was really rubbish at tying knots. So I never sort of really learned what it meant to be a Boy Scout and to be prepared. But in this passage, it throws up a couple of interesting thoughts because prepared can mean two things depending on just how you read it. So being prepared can be being willing or being ready. So you're prepared to do something, you're willing to do it, or you're prepared to do something in that you have got ready uh, and are ready and, uh, and there to do it. And actually, both of those interpretations are relevant to this passage and to how we apply it in our lives. Let's start with the first one, to be willing to do something. Always be willing to give the reason for the hope that you have. I know the thought in some ways that that's fairly basic fairly obvious. And yet the surprising thing is that sometimes we don't seem to be willing to talk about faith matters to people outside of the church, or even sometimes people inside the church. 
It's as though faith is somehow a very personal thing. We edit faith out of our lives and conversations when we talk to people uh, who don't share the same faith as us. We talk about all the other things that we did at the weekend, but perhaps not that we went to church. We talk about all the other things that we enjoy, all our other hobbies, but not about our involvement in church or our faith in Christ. Sometimes we have this unwillingness. And yet what Jesus is saying to us is that you must always be willing to share your faith. And why shouldn't we? If we found something that's so special and so amazing, why wouldn't we be willing to share it? I'm sure if you went down to the supermarket and discovered that they'd had they got a 90% off everything sale, you'd be straight on the phone to all your family and friends telling them to get down there as quick as they can before everything sold out. Because that's really good news, isn't it? But we all have good news about Jesus. Are we as willing to share that with our friends? So the first thing we need to do is to be willing to give a reason. But the second is to be ready, to be ready to give a reason. And that actually sometimes means stopping and taking a bit of time to think about what we might want to say to people. One of the things they say to us uh, in the, uh, on the course is that when you're going to tell somebody your story, don't tell them the whole thing. You don't have to start at the beginning. You may want to start at some significant event in your faith life, somewhere, somewhere that Jesus particularly touched your life and, and made a real difference. And there may be more than one of those occasions that you, that you can think about. And you may want to stop and think about which bits of it you would like to share. How you might tell that story. How you can perhaps condense down a, quite a long story into a few short sentences. And it doesn't mean that you've got to then launch into that story the first time you meet somebody again. But rather be ready when the opportunity arises to share some of your story, some of your experience, some of your faith journey with people. And it may be that a particular story will be relevant to a, a particular occasion. Just try and speak about it naturally. And a lot of the time it is simply about not avoiding talking about Jesus, but actually be willing and ready to do it. You see, we have something that we feel can make a huge difference to the world. I know that my life has been richer for sharing it with Jesus. I know there have been times when he stood beside me, times when he's carried me, times when he has really made a difference in my life. And I shouldn't be afraid or ashamed to share those times. Because if he's made a difference in my life, if he's made my life richer and better, he can do that for others as well. The whole point of the church, its whole purpose, is to proclaim the gospel, to share the good news. And you know, the most effective way we do that is through our conversations with our families and friends. Not preaching at them, but being willing to just share the difference that God has made in our lives. So, are you prepared? Are you ready? 
Are you willing to give the reason for the hope that you have in Christ? We now come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Mighty God, you are a very present help in all our troubles and we put our faith in you. You are the Lord, God of all power in heaven and on earth. And we rejoice in your love, your faithfulness and your power to save. And we say our prayers for our neighbours throughout the world and for ourselves. As images of a nun kneeling between police and protesters pleading for peace in Myanmar go global, we pray for the people of Myanmar, that no matter what their ethnic background, their religion, their job or their status, calm heads may prevail during this time of tension and peace win the day. We pray for all areas, Lord, of tension, unrest and war, that you send your spirit to grant wisdom and insight to the leaders, for we long for peace in our world and on our streets. Lord, as we reflect on talking Jesus and sharing our story with others, we give you thanks for those who have helped and encouraged us on our faith journey. Lord, fill your church with wisdom, that it may reflect your love and light and be an image of your goodness. Lord, may we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour, not only in word, but by the way we live, and so bring others to a deeper awareness of your love for them. On Mothering Sunday, we thank you for this special day of thanksgiving for all mothers, and we catch a glimpse through a mother's love for her child of your love for each of us. We thank you for the care, dedication and devotion all mothers show their children. And we pray that today we will especially show our gratitude. We acknowledge that this will be a difficult day for some, Lord, for various reasons. And we ask that you minister to them your peace and comfort at this time. We pray for all who are sick in hospital or in care, particularly as visits are restricted or even prevented due to the virus. As we hold them before you in our hearts and minds, Lord, may they be especially aware of your loving presence, giving them peace, hope and even joy. And we pray this too for their loved ones, unable to see them at this crucial time. We ask that you comfort those who are anxious, strengthen those who fear the future, and guide those for whom all seems lost. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves, and in a short moment of silence, we lay our own needs before you, God, in faith and hope. Lord, you call us to love our neighbour as ourselves. Yet sometimes we find it hard to love ourselves or may be dissatisfied with ourselves. Refresh us in your love, we pray, confident that you accept us as we are, knowing that you cherish us in our vulnerability. Enable us to embrace the truth that we are a child of God loved and forgiven. Grant us all, Lord, the knowledge and assurance of your abiding presence in every aspect of our lives, that your unfailing love is realised through every experience of light and shade. Our faithful companion, make us alive once more to your love. Hear our prayers that we may love you with our whole being and willingly share the concerns of our neighbours 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us once again for our online service. Thank you to Kina for leading us in our prayers. And we will continue to be for, here for you uh, through the coming weeks of this lockdown uh, as we gradually move towards Pentecost when we expect to reopen our buildings. But in the meantime, do join us again next week. And don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel. It helps to raise the profile of what we're doing on YouTube. But for now, we ask God's blessing as we go. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us forever. Amen.